Hello, welcome to NCAV. Today we're going to do an introduction on fluoroscopic and C-arm Philips BV Pulsera. What we have here is a Philips BV Pulsera second generation. We have LCD flat panel monitors. We have our foot panel, as well as our, as well as our hand switch. The main components of the BV Pulsera is your workstation and your C-arm. The workstation comes equipped with the printer, as well as your network connections, mouse, video, and your USB port here. Uh, over here, we have the C-arm itself or fluoroscopic machine. Uh, you have your foot panel, your hand, and then of course your intensifier camera, as well as the x-ray tube here. That's the primary units. Here we have the key for the, the C-arm unit itself. It's in the on position here and the off position here. Of course, enabled to, to actually use the machine, you have to have it in the on position. Uh, this is our foot panel, but the plug-in is basically the same here also. You'll see here that there are two dots, one on each uh, plug-in. You simply line it up with the marking on the opposite side here, and then it'll be a screw on. Like so. And then you don't want to pull on the cable itself. You want to make sure that the cables are out of the way before you move the machine. You don't want to run them over. It's a very expensive to replace, so keep that in mind. To position the C-arm the way that you would like, uh, first off, you have your brake. Right now it is on. You simply push it forward to turn it off, so that way you can actually move the unit itself. And once you have it where you want it, put the brake on. We're going to come up here to your handles here. When you're in motion, this is for you to be able to move the machine back and forth without having to, you know, adjust it the other way. And then you move it back to for forward motion. Uh, we have here, this right here would be the boom. Simply unlock and that will allow forward and back motion on the boom itself. We have here. This is going to be your rotation, so unlock there, allows you to move the C-arm back and forth there. When you're in position, simply lock it. We have also, this right here gives us the ability to spin the C-arm, gives you a range of 180 degrees, and then you can bring it back. You can lock it into place at any any of these uh, angles here. However, we're going to set it back at the zero angle. Lock it back into place. This is your slide here. When we unlock it, it's going to allow us to slide the C arm. That way, you can get an image from a different angle if you if you need to, with the patience you have. Once you're done, simply lock it. Uh, keep in mind, moving the C arm. Do not have it plugged in to the other one uh, because you know you don't want to damage the workstation or any of the cords. Now, in order to do the automatic adjustment here, you have to press these two buttons to go up and hold these two buttons to go down. You will not be able to push one separately. You have to push both in order for it to get it to move. Once you have everything in position and it is plugged up, we're going to turn the workstation on. All you have to do is simply hit the on button here. The workstation will take a second to boot up. This is going to turn both the workstation and the C-arm unit on together. If you notice here on the screen, you're going to see some blinking on your side. There's nothing wrong with the unit. It's just the frame rate of this unit is slower than the camera itself. So you're catching the frames as they're flashing. This is when you want to start a new study on a patient. You see here you have schedule review and setup. What we're going to do to add the patient is simply click the little add here. Okay. Now, once you've uh, clicked the add, 
You're going to input the patient name, Ben in this case, your patient ID 12345, and the date of birth of the patient as well as the sex of the patient. Once you have that in place, you can pick your type of, uh, of study and then put the phys physician's name in here, which will be listed once you have your physicians in there. And then you can hit OK and it will log your patient. Once you have your patient entered, as you can see here, Ben, we're going to go up here and we'll start the examination. Simply click start examination and then that'll bring us to where we can use our fluoroscopic machine. All right, now we're going to get ready to take some images. Once you have the patient in position, of course, we're going to use this as our patient today. Keep in mind, you want to make sure that you have your safety gear on. I have a lead vest here. And then I also have a, a x-ray uh, uh, opaque wall. Uh, the FDA can sue us for this, so <laughs> you want to go ahead and make sure you have that ready. A couple different ways you can actually use the fluoroscopic machine. Number one, you have your hand control here. And then your foot pedal down here. It's completely up to you which one you'd rather use or the whatever circumstance you're using it in. Uh, but once the patient has been prepped and is in position, I'm gonna go ahead and use the hand control for this one. And we're gonna go ahead and take the picture. So hold it down until you see it. Now, if you noticed, there was a, a caution light that came on when I pushed it. That's to let you know that the, the uh, fluoroscopic machine is in the process of x-raying. Uh, once you have your image here, we can actually go ahead and transfer it to the other screen using this button right here. That's going to put it here. Now this is also how you're going to save your images. Okay. So you can't just save it here. You have to transfer it to this one and then it will save. Once you have it here, then we can continue to take pictures and it'll keep count of how many you've actually saved here. All right. We're going to go ahead and take an enhanced picture. There's two pedals here. One of them is the standard fluoroscopic uh, image and the other one is the enhanced. Now, of course, it's gonna expose uh, the, the patient to a higher level of x-rays using the enhanced. However, you can get a crisper picture out of it. And then we also have the hand control that has the same thing here. This is your standard, this is your enhanced. So now that the patient is in position, we're gonna go ahead and take an enhanced shot. That's all you have to do. Once you have the image there, you can come down here, do a couple different things with it. First off, you'll want to save the image by transferring it to the other site with that button right there. Now, if you want to pick out a certain image, we have our category list here. You'll hit that button there, and then that'll actually give you each individual picture that you've image that you've taken at this time and then you can just simply hit the arrow keys to kind of pick which one you want I'm gonna go ahead and select that one right there and then go back to the screen just like that show you one more time select the other one go back to the screen that's how you go between images you can also simply hit the arrow key to go back and forth on the left side and as you can see, it keeps count for you on which image you're looking at. There's our first image, there's our second image, and it'll continue to count until you're done with the procedure. Now, if you want to go back, or actually if you want to flag one of the images, say you have another doctor that's going to be looking, you want them to look specifically at that image. I'm going to go ahead and press this one right here. And what that's going to do, it's going to put a little flag on the image itself, as you can see. That way the doctor knows to be aware of that one specifically. And now that we have uh, the image that we're looking for, we can do a couple different things from here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and print one of these images so you can see. Uh, right now, first off, make sure that the printer actually has paper in it. Now I recommend when opening and closing, there's an open and close button here. Always use the button, wear and tear, doing it manually. You know, it can cause you problems in the future. This is a 210 by 25 high density. Go ahead and stick that down in the slot there. 
and roll it over, get it, make sure it's in the slots. Go ahead and close it one more time. And then from here, all you have to do is hit the, the print button here. Go ahead and that. As you can see, it'll start to print out for you. Now you also have uh, your contrast, your brightness here. You can feed through, copy image, and then if you have a different image sizes, you can switch it up right here. All you gotta do is rip it off. Now you can also, with your images, neat fact about this is there's a USB button here. So we're gonna go ahead and install the USB in the USB slot where it says storage. Add that. We're gonna come back up here. We're gonna press the button and it's gonna tell you on the screen that your image is being saved to the USB. Once that image is gone, you can go ahead and take the USB out. Your image will be stored. You can simply take it to another computer and it'll be on the drive itself. You can list through it and see images on other, in other places if necessary. Go ahead and leave that there for now. Now, from here, simply go back into your client information. And you're good to go. You have a dose report here. This will actually tell you the uh, dosage and how much time they had under that dosage. And simply close that out. And then from there you can export it as well. So give you all the information that you need here to export. And this is when you're done with the examination. The patient is cleared, just hit okay. And now it'll be removed from your schedule as well. First thing you're gonna notice on your screen is this screen blinking. It's because the, the uh, frames per second is slower here than what the camera is. So that's, that's what it is, it's not broken. There's nothing wrong with this unit. So we can go ahead and transfer the image to the screen from here if necessary by hitting this button. We can go ahead and print also from here if necessary. This is going to basically flip your image this is your rotation. This is your brightness. Most of the time you're gonna be on auto. Uh, over here you can adjust. Right now, manual, you have auto. Manual is going to allow you to actually input your own KV and MA for the procedure that you're performing by simply pressing the buttons on the left. But most of the time you are gonna probably stay in, in auto. Okay, from here you can choose your exam type. I know you probably can't make it out on your screen there, but by selecting the top one, you can actually change the type of exam that you're doing. That way it's labeled that on the patient list. You have orthopedics, head and spine, vascular cerebral, vascular HQ, CO2, abdominal, thorax, the whole list of what you need in terms of your patient and the procedure that you're performing. Once you have the one that you want to actually perform, Simply hit the uh, accept button on the right top and then you can go from there. Uh, you also have here your exposures, fluoroscopy technique, exposure technique. We'll list a couple different things in your MA and then that, that's all you need to know on this side here. Now here on the far right you have your kilometer adjustments. This right here is your iris for the kilometer. This is going to close it. This is going to open it. This is for the lens of the kilometer. This is going to close it and this is going to open it and this is to actually rotate the, the whole kilometer itself, whether it's left or to the right. Now uh, most of the time again though, auto on both sides here is what you'll probably maintain. However, if necessary, you can adjust it yourself. Once you have your procedure completed, the patient is uh, off the table. At this point in time, you can go ahead and actually turn the machine off by simply hitting the button on the left here. And that's going to completely shut the system down in both parts. Now keep in mind, if you at this point are going to need to move this workstation or the C-arm uh, fluoroscopic machine itself, take it apart. 
don't move it around together. The uh, wiring is very expensive. You don't want to have to replace it. So at the end of the day, uh, keep it unplugged as well when you're not in, when not in use is my advice. Uh, that way it doesn't you know destroy, mess up the charger and charging unit or anything within the machine itself. And uh, be very cautious when moving it because again, this is a very expensive piece of equipment. All right, thank you for watching our video. We hope that you found it helpful and uh, we hope you visit us again. Thank you.